What up? It's your boy, boy T Bear here in reaction. Today is Wrestling Wednesday. About to get into a video from WrestleMania. We're about to get into 10 most what WTF moves in WWE. And like I said, WWE always, no matter how great of a, of a wrestling company they, they always have some WT, WTF moments, especially some WTF moves as well, too. So let's check out the 10 most WTF moves in WWE. I know the one in the cover is definitely going to be it, but uh, let's get it. I'm sorry, it's, it's taking a little while to get uh, full screen or anything, though. But hope y'all been enjoying my wrestling the Wednesdays so far. But let's get it. Right, anytime, WrestleMania. Sorry if my videos come chop, but I'm still trying to figure out why it's so choppy dappy. Anyway. But there have been some iconic moves in WWE yep. history, like from that. Sweet Chin Music mm -hmm. to the RKO. These moves are truly memorable for all the right reasons. Yep. However, there are certain moves that leave fans utterly speechless. Either they're completely inappropriate for a wrestling match, or they look so bad that fans are pulled out of the illusion that this is pro wrestling. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WTF moves in WWE. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Oh, we now have a Hindi channel as well. So if you wow. speak or understand Hindi, check it out. Number 10, Quincy Elliott, Booby Smash. First thing first, man, what happened to my man? I was kind of excited for this though, but yeah, it was entertaining, but it was questionable. Quincy Elliott is one of the more interesting and unique characters that has surfaced in recent years. Footage of Elliot's matches usually go viral on social media because he performs certain moves that leave fans in a state of shock. Take for instance when Elliot was wrestling NXT star Scripps on NXT Level Up. Suddenly during the match, Elliot performed one of the most unique moves ever. Instead of performing the popular punches in the corner spot, he decided to use his <laughs> upper body instead of his fist. This left fans Lord. and the announcers in total disbelief. We don't blame them. Number 9, Braun Strowman and Ricochet, Hairbrush Attack. Hairbrush the team of Strowman and Ricochet have teamed together a number hey, this of is times good. on this TV and No lie, this is a good one tag one particular time. match, they have received attention for all the wrong reasons. The duo were wrestling the Maximum Male Models in March of 2023. And during the match, Strowman managed to obtain the hairbrush of the male models. After using it to comb his beard, Strowman did the unthinkable. The former WWE Universal Champion decided to violently use the hairbrush on his backside with <laughs> toilet paper. Strowman would then throw the brush back to Ricochet, and Ricochet then proceeded to attack Mansoor with an let's say, contaminated item. I go lie. I would, I die. I'm laughing right now. I would love. To, I actually would see. I would love they did that on live TV. That I would then dying because that that because I can't stand all uh, max um, maximum maximum male model that nonsense right there, man. Why it still exists? I don't know. At the LA night, and dropped them, but still. Number eight, Eva Marie sliced Slice bread. bread. Okay. Eva Marie is Eva Marie, so, the best wrestler yeah. in the world, and she was without question pushed beyond her ability. For During Marie's reason. run in NXT, she would debut her finishing move, the sliced bread. This move has been perfected over the years, and it's very popular, especially with athletic talents. Mm -hmm. However, when Marie performed the move, it legitimately received audible laughs from Lord. the crowd. The move is supposed to be performed quickly and with grace, but Marie looked like she was doing it in bullet time. <laughs> it's unclear why WWE decided to give someone who was struggling to perform basic moves a notable finish of this nature, but WWE at one point were adamant on making the former Total Diva star the I next big thing. I still don't get the push for even Marie. That, that's what you definitely was saying. She was definitely getting pushed for your looks. Now, I mean, you just have to defend that up, but definitely, even I couldn't defend that, man. She was definitely getting pushed for looks for whatever reason. First of all, I was always wondering when they, they had told Diva what what, what was uh, the, pull, pull, the uh, purpose of her and JoJo on there, where they was like, well, they know, I don't know, it's maybe upcoming wrestlers who know. But I feel like they got like pushed over a lot of folks that was like from FCW at the time or the, the then NXT, who knows, but still. But, but her, she definitely got pushed just for her looks, man. Number seven, Vito Dress Code. Jesus Christ, man. Oh, my God. What were they thinking with this bullshit here? Oh, my God. In 2006, WWE the made fuck? the bold decision to re-debut Vito as a cross-dressing man. This idea came from Vince and Stephanie McMahon, who randomly came up to Vito backstage and asked him how he'd feel about wearing a dress. 
Whilst his gimmick was atrocious and mainly existed to make McMahon laugh, Vito was incredibly dedicated to the character. He was, he but... reported that he would stay in character when traveling, <sighs> with the aim of trying to get the new persona over. But the most infamous thing about this gimmick was, without question, his finishing move, known as the dress code. Lord! This involved Vito putting his opponent's head under his dress so their face would face his crotch. Lord! He would then lock in an armbar and make his opponent submit whilst their face was buried in him. This was an interesting move to say the least. It worked when Vito was wrestling enhancement talents, but the thought of Vito applying the move to a wrestler such as The Undertaker or Batista was simply wrong. Number six, Road Dog. The pump him a hump, yeah. Added hump. <laughs> It was, was one of the it was like when the hump was, uh, I, I get it because of the doggy style thing he had going, but still, <laughs> it was an anti -era. slam. This move is common in pro wrestling, but Road Dog's version of the move added a rather inappropriate twist. Just as Road Dog was getting ready to perform the move, he would proceed to hump as a yeah. <laughs> On the surface, this is a classic Attitude Era move, but when the move is analyzed at a deeper level, it's one of the most disturbing mm -hmm. finishing moves that has ever existed. Number 5, Eugene Horseback Ride. The Eugene persona was a controversial character. It was classical by Joy Day. The majority of Eugene he has some good storylines though, no lie. His favorite wrestlers such as The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yep. But one particular move certainly wasn't inspired by a WWE legend. In the majority of his matches, Eugene would proceed to mount his opponent. Giddy up, giddy up, yo. <laughs> yeah. This wasn't bad enough. He would often spank the backside of his opponent to add insult to injury. Eugene was wild. This was humorous at first, but yo. when Eugene was performing it in every single match, it quickly lost its comedic spark. Number four, Bastion Booger, trip to the back cave. The name sound disgusting stuff and the rest look itself was just disgusting. My God. In the summer of 93, oh my God. WWE debuted the character of Bastion Booger. This would go down as one of the worst gimmicks in WWE. You got there right. This was truly awful. In essence, Booger's character was an unkept wrestler who loved food. This character fell completely flat though. And one of the reasons fans resented the persona oh was because God. his finishing move was truly revolting. Booger's finisher was known as a trip to the back cave, as it would see Booger sit oh on his God. with his groin area landing in his opponent's face. This was sold with disgust Nasty. from the WWE commentary team as they made unflattering he comments. He made a looking unflattering. I'm, I'm that is simply man. horrible. Ugh. Number three, Kazani Talula Bella. First thing first, man. That was a wasted push right there. I was looking forward to see a lot from Kazani, man. They what have they dropped the ball with that man? Well, him in the general, man. But the WWE let's see. debuted their fair share of characters that failed to get over. Yep. Kazani is one of them. Yup. It's hard to truly define what his character his, gimmick was supposed to be, but we were told as an audience that he was from some kind of carnival, and Kazani would describe the character as a mix between Jake the Snake Roberts and Doink the Clown. But this did little to generate any interest in the character. Kazani only had one singles match on TV as a character when he debuted possibly one of the weakest looking finishers ever. Kazani's finisher was supposed to resemble a double arm DDT, but his variation involved in performing a roll through, meaning his opponent simply did a forward roll. When Kazani did this during his match with MVP, fans believed it was botched as there was no reason that the move was going to hurt anyone. Well, the reality was that this was Kazani's legitimate finishing move that he'd used in WWE Developmental. Uh -huh. Number two, Viscera. The oh my god, here we go. Lore, this, oh my god, why? I get that was his character, he was a love machine, but why? By <laughs> Zagra. Viscera was one of the wrestlers who went through a number of characters yes. during his WWE tenure. He was once the 1995 King of the Ring winner, and he was once a key part of the Undertaker's Ministry of Darkness faction. However, without question, the most the notorious machine. gimmick Viscera had was when he became the world's largest love, love machine. machine. During the gimmick, the Viscera character would become overly sexualized, and some of his moves were changed to accommodate this drastic gimmick change. One move that was added into his <laughs> is the Visagra. 
This move involved the near 500 pound man getting on his opponent's back. <laughs> this move was truly insane. Lord. It's unbelievable to think that Bishra went from being the Undertaker's henchman to humping wrestlers on my feet. <laughs> oh, God. And number one, John Cena. Oh, yeah, six this move will do. Yeah. During his legendary yeah. career, yeah. he became notorious for having five moves of doom. Mm -hmm. Some fans believe that Cena was only able to execute five moves, and that's all he ever needed to win notable matches over the likes of Shawn Michaels and Triple H. Cena would eventually get in on the joke, and in 2018, mm -hmm. he would debut a move that was yep. literally known as the sixth move of doom. Yep. Cena had heavily teased the move in interviews and across social media, so fans expected something really special. But when Cena eventually performed the move at the Super mm -hmm. Showdown pay-per-view in 2018, fans were incredibly disappointed. During Cena's tag team match where he teamed with Bobby Lashley to take on Elias and Kevin Owens, mm -hmm. Cena began the sixth move of doom by yeah, doing a bizarre cross with his arms and then proceeded to throw a basic worked punch at Elias. Yeah. Fans were confused as to what was happening and it was clear that Cena was just trolling with the move. Yeah. The weird thing was that this actually resulted in a pinfall victory for him, which was supposed to make the move look credible, but due to the move looking so bad upon execution, it did nothing other than make fans question what Cena was thinking. The move was supposed to link to a movie that Cena was shooting with Jackie Chan, but this connection was lazily explained. Yeah, so I will say that, yeah, it was, he was just showing fans, you know, but he, he would like find ways to add moves on him, so folks got talking like the, the, uh, moonsault, I think he tried to do, uh, the, I forget, the, 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 the little springboard, uh, stunner, and something else he tried to do as well, too. Either way, good, good, good little video from, uh, WrestleMania, I mean, they always have some cool videos, though, but, um, other than that, if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel, it's your boy T-Bear signing off, one love.